Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I am your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. Go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free PDF on the top 200 drugs. Uh, it's a great little study guide refresher. Uh, I pull out some of the most important uh, clinical pearls that you're actually going to see in practice and uh, loop them in with the, the drug there. And I also... I uh, have obviously seen a lot of pharmacology exams and that type of thing. And so I, I pulled out a lot of things that are often uh, tested uh, in exams throughout your career as well uh, when it comes to, to pharmacology. So uh, it's a 31-page PDF, absolutely uh, free to use, study, uh, easy to study from, easy to read. Uh, go get that at reallifepharmacology.com. All right, let's get into the drug of the day today, and that is clarithromycin. The brand name of this medication is Biaxin. Now, it is a macrolide antibiotic. So similar in in class to azithromycin, erythromycin. And as you maybe know, if you've been out in practice a little bit or have seen some medications prescribed, uh, it isn't used terribly often. Um, And there's a a couple of of reasons for that. Um, One is that uh, it is twice daily dosing, particularly with the uh, immediate release formulation. Uh, and the other big thing, which I'll cover uh, at the end extensively, is drug interaction. So those are the two major reasons, in, in my opinion, why you just don't see this medication used terribly often. But there are a few select situations where you might see it. All right, so mechanistically, let's, let's cover that. Uh, this drug binds the uh, 50S ribosomal subunit and ultimately what that does being an antimicrobial or antibacterial agent is that messes up or interferes with bacterial protein synthesis and by doing that obviously you stop growth and replication of the bacteria and help treat and and manage infections and that's what this medication is used for. Uh, The indications that I have seen this medication used for Um, I would say in practice, uh, the two most common situations have been uh, H. pylori uh, and then in rare cases where patients have been diagnosed with uh, whooping cough or pertussis, I have seen it used there as well. Um, Now, keep in mind um, that in H. pylori, it isn't necessarily the first-line treatment, but in patients maybe that are intolerant of Um, bismuth quadruple therapy and some other antibiotics, you might see it used um, in combination with other drugs there. Uh, Other indications, um, MAC, that's usually more of a a unique uh, infection as far as uh, immunosuppressed, maybe HIV patients. Um, It is a potential alternative uh, in pneumonia, um, strep throat, otitis media, that type of thing. Um, but again, azithromycin usually has decent coverage in those situations as well and potentially has a few less uh, drug interactions as well as azithromycin. We can typically get by with dosing that um, once a day in the majority of situations because of a longer half-life. So yeah, not, not terribly common you're going to see this medication used, but those are a few uh, indications that it could be helpful in. Let's talk about uh, adverse drug reactions. Uh, GI upset's probably going to be the most common issue. Um, I would say it, it's not as significant as, say, some of the penicillin antibiotics. So I would say it's a, a lower occurrence, um, but still can, can happen. Uh, rarely there's been some LFT abnormalities associated um, with clarithromycin and the macrolides in general, I guess. Uh, QTC prolongation risk is something that is there and can be a cumulative effect, particularly in patients at risk or on other medications. And I'll talk about a few of those examples, of course, in the the drug interaction section. Uh, And then if we use frequent antibiotics, particularly macrolides, clarithromycin, uh, C. diff risk can go up. The more we use it, longer duration, higher dosages, And so that is kind of a a risk warning uh, associated with the adverse 
uh, drug reaction profile there. From a kinetics standpoint, um, I do remember that this drug is uh, dosed based upon renal function. So if you see somebody with a diagnosis of uh, CKD stage 3, stage 4, stage 5, um, you're probably going to want to go look that up and make sure you've got the appropriate dose when we're using clarithromycin. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material, uh, you've got to go check out meded101.com slash store. Uh, we've got resources on uh, statistics, regulatory topics, obviously the clinical aspects of various exams like BCPS, BCGP, ambulatory care, BCMTMS, uh, and the psychiatric exam as well. If you're a student, we've got NAPLEX content. And we've tried to really tailor each of uh, the study material packages to the specific exam. So in ambulatory care, you're not going to have a ton of info in there um, about acute care topics, right? So we've, we've really d done a great job to try to cut and paste um, and try to figure out, um, uh, following the content outlines, how to best prepare you for these exams. So uh, go check out all those resources, meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Uh, if you're a nurse, dietitian, uh, physician, med student, uh, NPPA, we've got books, uh, case studies, uh, clinical pearls, all sorts of different stuff uh, on Amazon, Audible. Um, and again, all those links you can find at meded101.com slash store. Uh, your support there directly uh, helps financially support this podcast and allows me to be able to, to continue to do it. So uh, greatly appreciative uh, to those of you uh, who have supported uh, the podcast. All right, so let's get back into drug interactions. And again, this is, I would say, the number one reason why clarithromycin is not used on a more regular basis. Uh, this drug inhibits CYP3A4. And if you've listened to other podcasts, if you've uh, learned something about pharm pharmacology and drug interactions, CYP3A4 is a major pathway of breakdown for many drugs, okay? And so by clarithromycin inhibiting this breakdown pathway, you're gonna cause concentrations of other drugs to rise, and that's gonna increase the, the risk of, of toxicity. Um, there are literally, if you go look up clarithromycin, there are literally hundreds of drug interactions, okay? So obviously, as always, this isn't an extensive list of all those interactions, but um, I can just give you, list you off some examples here, uh, classic ones that, that I remember. Uh, so fentanyl concentrations could increase. So that could increase our risk of opioid toxicity. Not very cool. Um, Xanax or alprazolam concentrations can go up. Uh, blood pressure med, amlodipine, uh, apixaban, warfarin, a couple of anticoagulants could lead to, you know, serious uh, increases in, in bleed risk. Uh, statin therapy, so simvastatin, atorvastatin, kind of classic um, examples there of, of concentrations uh, that could go up. Uh, some of the corticosteroids that we use um, could have their concentrations rise. Uh, seizure med, like carbamazepine or bipolar agent 2, I guess, um, carbamazepine concentrations could go up. Uh, Tadalafil, PDE5 inhibitor, um, concentrations could go up leading to, to lower blood pressures and risk of dizziness and that type of thing. So in tons of situations where we could induce toxicity from another medication. Okay. So really, really important to think about drug interactions. If you're ever considering uh, prescribing or dispensing, or you see a patient using uh, this medication for sure. Uh, one last one, kind of a, a unique unique one, uh, ticagrelor. This actually has an active metabolite that's formed by CYP3A4 activity. So using clarithromycin could actually uh, ultimately end up reducing uh, ticagrelor's activity or its antiplatelet activity, which could, you know, put you at, at risk for, you know, clots and, and heart attacks and things like that. So um, 
definitely lots of kind of uh, drug interaction. That's kind of a unique one I wanted to to throw out that doesn't kind of go in the, the traditional uh, way that most uh, CYP3A4 inhibiting drug interactions do. Uh, and then lastly, I did want to touch on QTC prolongation, uh, drugs like amiodarone, antipsychotics, uh, citalopram. Uh, they can have QT prolonging effects on their own, but when added to clarithromycin, uh, that can have additive type effects, which could ultimately lead to an increased risk of uh, torsades de points, for example. So um, tons of drug interactions. That's probably my biggest takeaway. Uh, if you ever see clarithromycin used um, in a polypharmacy patient, you're probably going to have a drug interaction. Okay. So look it up, make sure you're doing things safely, make sure you're monitoring patients accordingly, uh, and, and playing it safe with the use of clarithromycin. Uh, so that's going to wrap it up for today. If you enjoyed this podcast, found it helpful, uh, leave a rating review on iTunes, wherever you're listening, share us with colleagues, friends, classmates, students, uh, anyone in healthcare that might benefit from some pharmacology education. Uh, I'm so appreciative uh, of all of you uh, who have helped uh, this this podcast grow really beyond my wildest uh, expectations. So please continue to do that. Uh, it helps with our, our rating and, and rankings on iTunes and and those other other platforms too. So helps us get to to more ears. Uh, go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Snag that free PDF, that free study guide. Um, absolutely free, no cost to you, just simply an email. Uh, and then, of course, support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store. Any purchases there go to directly uh, financially support this podcast uh, and what I'm trying to do with pharmacology education. So um, greatly appreciated. If you want to track me down, mededucation101 at gmail.com. Um, otherwise, LinkedIn is probably the social media platform I'm most active on. Um, so you can track me down and, and connect with me there as well if you wish. So uh, I'm going to sign off for today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.